Welcome to part two of uh, my breakdown of how I train. So uh, if you didn't see part one, watch it. This is part two. So my workout here was like, I don't know, two or three hours long. So I had to chop this video up for you guys. So uh, as you can see, I'm doing leg extension. Now look at how I do the, my leg extension. I usually go one leg at a time and I set the weight really light. I treat the leg extension like a bike. So I kind of do it for cardio instead of just pure strength, which is what most people do. So I do like hundreds of single leg extensions sometimes. Sometimes I just, that's my cardio. Like I just keep going, as you can see, one leg at a time. So, you know, until one leg burns out, which is like 10 to 20 reps on each leg. And then I switch to the other leg and I can just keep going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So don't worry about form. Like I'm just warming up, warming up my legs, my quads here. And I'll just keep going and going and going. And then, yeah, when I'm bored or tired, I just, I just stop. And then I, as you can see, what am I going to do here? Let's find out. By the way, I, I broke my thumb today, so I got an ice pack here. I'm, if you're wondering what this is, the bottom of the screen, it's ice pack. Just tending my wound here. Ah, okay. Calf raises. Okay, so... <clears throat> so I just find something I can prompt my leg up. And I switch back and forth to each leg. Now, as you can see, it's not proper form. I'm not focusing on strength. I'm just focusing on volume here. So I'm just going for however many reps, maybe 10, 20 reps each leg until it burns. Let's keep going. Okay. I'm not, again, I'm not working on strength. I'm working on endurance here. So I know the leg can go slower and it can, the movement can be more strict and I can hold at the top, at the bottom. Yeah. You could do that later on. Okay. But when you're in warm up, warm up phase, like here, like I'm doing, this is like in between for me. So not every set has to be like pure strength is what I'm saying. You don't have to go 110% every time. No, okay. So I'm just doing some shrugs using the dips, dip bars. Okay. Just shrugs. Just working on ball. Okay. One arm at a time. Boom. Switch, switch the arms. It's a good exercise. Okay. <clears throat> Put all your body weight onto one arm and the other and just switch. Just lift one arm, one hand off the dip bar. It's good exercise to warm up. This, this is all just warm up to me. To me, this is just like getting ready for something more intense later on. And that's what you got to do. You, when, you, when, I, when you work out or when I work out, you got to like a bucket. You can fill it with large rocks or you can fill it with pebbles. This is me filling it up with pebbles. Okay. So you have a mixture of large rocks, like those intense Exercises and then pebbles, like the warming up to it, like the stretching, the, the volume here, right? Volume. Just keep going, 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 going. I can go in. And I, this is like my cardio here. Alternate. Okay. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat. Stretch. Always stretch. If you don't know what to do in between uh, sets, stretch. Stretch to your heart's delight, okay? Hamstrings are always tight, okay? Hamstrings can always be looser, so just stretch, stretch. Uh, this guy wanted to work on it. Yeah, just let him work out. Easy peasy, okay? And then I go back to that. Leg extension. And guess what I'm doing? I'm going for a heavier weight. You have no idea... How fortunate I am to be able to do to do this at this gym at the Planet Fitness. Previous gym that I went to was a community center, and there was only one leg extension there, and people would just sit on the leg extension playing with their smartphones. One guy he put his smartphone on top of the seat of a leg extension, and he was doing some other exercise, and then someone tried to use the leg extension, and he was yelling at him. I'm still using it. BS. Just let 
if you're not using it, let someone else use it, okay? Unless they're doing a different exercise. So, yeah, just let them work in, okay? Now I'm doing the hamstring curl. Again, this is not really like, I don't have a leg day. I don't have like a quad day or a hamstring day. I don't really focus. Sometimes it's just, it's good to get your muscles involved, right? Like a, your quads or your hamstrings involved. And it doesn't have to be intense. Some days are light. So this day is obviously light. I'm going light because I think I was doing chest on that this day. All right. So my workouts are all encompassing. I, I do every body part, full body workout in case, I don't know, I'm sick next few days or I have to skip the gym for the next few days. I just put it in for extra insurance. And you can see like, is it slow? Is it perfect form? No, this is just all warm up for me. Just get the blood flowing this is what's important, right? I mean, something is better than nothing for me. So I'd rather put the little pebbles in the bucket. And these kind of exercises are that. So I'm really enjoying my time at Planet Fitness because of two things, time and space. Time is 24 hour gym and space. You got lots of space. So no people, there's no one like, people aren't lining up for things is what I have to say compared to my other gym that I used to went, go to a community center, right? People were always lining up. People were always waiting, fighting for one machine, right? And people were just not making good use of their time. And they're just playing on their phone and all that idling away. But this gym, yeah, you got enough time, you got enough space to, to do everything. So I hopped on this machine here. It's a, like a it's a it's a fly machine for for your chest, but you can go reverse. Okay, rear delts. When you, when I do rear delts, I don't really go overload. I don't go crazy. I go light because it's it's the this muscle here, this back muscle, right, of your shoulder. There's only so much it can do. So again, I, I go for volume. How many sets, how many reps? I don't count. Seriously, honestly, I don't count. I just keep going until it's done. Like my body says to me, I'm done. And then I move on. That's how I work out. So I piss off a lot of people at the gym when people ask me how many sets I got. And my answer is I don't count sets. I don't count the reps. I just keep going until my body says, I'm done. That's the honest answer. It's not calisthenics. It's just the way I train. Volume. Just keep going, going, going. Going, going, going. Okay, now, in between sets, just moving, moving around, getting the blood flow. And then I go for another one. I don't even know what weight this is. It's probably something light. Again, you don't have to go heavy. Yeah, you don't have to. Oh, that looks pretty strenuous. Look at my face. Okay, it burns. And then what? Oh, here I go again. I do another one. Just keep going. Yeah, boy. He's training hard. Yeah, just keep going. Don't stop. Burns. Take a breast. Take a a pause. A rest. Okay. This exercise here. Okay, now getting the hip flexors ready. Warmed up. Loose. Because you'll see why. In a minute. Okay. This is uh, something that's really helpful for gymnasts. Everything, everyday life, okay? Everyone should be doing this. Hip, hip flexor exercises, okay? Just swing your legs in all different directions. I think I do like 10, 20 reps in each leg. All right. Uh, what am I going to do here? I get, a, I get a lot of runny noses because I'm upside down a lot. And I just, I strain, I push my body really hard. I don't know why. I get... I don't get nosebleeds, but it's it's like to that effect, right? When you push your body really hard. Here I go. Fixed barbell. Up, up and away. Just 
So that's one attempt. Okay. See, was it was it perfect? No. It was just an attempt. Don't worry about whatever what other people think. Just do the attempts. Keep going. Yeah, I got a runny nose. See? Runny nose always. I don't know. Maybe it's the air conditioning. Maybe it's being upside down. Here we go again. Go again. Look forward. Adjust. 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 Fight it. Boom. Attempt number two. Okay. And then go back to swinging legs. Hip flexors. See? So the hip flexors, that motion right there that I'm doing is good for your hands to getting up into a handstand. Go leg swig. Boom. Loose. Loose. Boop. Boop. You notice that the pockets of my pants are out. Uh, I think because, uh, I forgot what, why I did do that. <laughs> I, oh, here I go to two fixed barbells. Uh, here we go, boy. Everyone freaks out when I do this in any gym. It's like to the untrained eye. This is like, what the hell are you doing? No one's ever done this. No one does this because they have parallettes or, you know, dip bars. Okay. But I use fixed barbells. It's even harder. See how the bar fixed barbells are rolling? Like, ooh. so I have to control the barbells and control my body at the same time. So this is much challenging, much more challenging than using parallettes or push up bars or dip bars. See, the fixed barbells, they're wobbling. So you got to control that. A lot of stability. I like it. Do I have parallettes? Do I have push-up bars on my own? No. I tried. I purchased uh, some wooden parallettes recently, and I didn't like them. I did not like them. One, I don't like the grip of wood. Now, this is personal preference. Okay, I'm just doing some lunges here in between. Okay. If you want to take your mind off hand set, like it's something challenging, you got to go... Do something else and then come back to it. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, wooden parallettes. I don't like the grip of wood. Same with gymnastics rings. Like, I don't like the grip of wooden gymnastics rings either. I mean, yeah, gymnasts use it. It has its purpose. But personally, I like the feeling of cold steel in my hand. I like the feeling of cold steel barbells, cold steel dumbbells, cold steel pull-up bars. When you go to a calisthenics park or a park in general outside, you're, you're gripping steel, a painted steel, right? Cold steel bars. But when you grip wood, it's like, it's warm, it's slippery. You got to put, use chalk. I just don't like the feeling. I like gripping. That's why I use fixed barbells because I like gripping cold steel in my hands. I mean, I could get, steel parallettes but again they'd be heavy and i don't want to transport them i got to carry them around in my bag or to the gym i didn't like it right same with the wooden parallettes i didn't like traveling with them to the gym it's it's big it's like you got to hold it in your hands you can't put it you can't stuff it in your backpack parallel wooden parallettes even the small ones so then so i returned my wooden parallettes that I purchased like after two days. I just didn't like it. Don't like the feeling. I want steel. Like before I used wooden parallettes, before I used parallettes in general, I used dumbbells. I had steel dumbbells and I, I practiced all my gripped handstands using dumbbells. And then just recently I, I switched to fixed barbells because a fixed barbell obviously it's it's longer the bar. So it, your wrists or your your hand here won't bang on to the dumbbell, right? Or fixed barbell compared to a dumbbell, right? Dumbbell, you got to be careful. Your you dumbbell can hit your head here on the way down, descent. So yeah, fixed barbells are, are all right. And the ones I'm using right now, are, I think it's 20, 30 pounds. So heavier ones, they're more stable because they, they're less wobbly. Uh, these ones are harder to control because they're lighter and they fidget around, right? So 
I'm just working on some handstand push-ups, wobbling, getting used to it, the feeling. Do I need chalk? No, I don't really need chalk. Okay, doing some lunges with the barbell out in front. All right. You don't have to go all the way deep. Your knee doesn't have to touch the ground. Don't worry about form, okay? Don't worry about what anyone says. Just do it. Do the exercise. Volume, okay? Okay, I'm switching side to side. Uh, this is something that I picked up from uh, Dmitry Bivol, the boxer, uh, the Russian boxer. He does this a lot. Swing side to side with a barbell out in front. Boom. 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 It's just good. It's good in general. This, these kind of warm-ups. That's just get the blood flowing. Again, small pebbles. A lot of people focus on large rocks, but incorporate small pebbles into your bucket. Okay, fill, it, fill up the bucket in between. Okay, everything doesn't have to be 100%. Uh, what am I going to do here? I think I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to do something with that. Fixed barbell, yes, you can see that right there. So I'm working on switching, uh, shifting handstands. Okay, so shifting the weight of the handstand from one arm to the other. Boom, boom. Okay, shifting side to side. I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, doing some attempts. It's very good for uh, weight distribution for one arm handstands. Uh, you notice that uh, a lot of one arm handstand balancers they they advocate you know switching to one shifting your weight to one side the fingers and then do 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 like that. Uh, I do that, but I also do this exercise. Uh, uh, I I don't remember who did this, who I saw doing this performing this, but you just you're just shifting your weight from one hand to the other, and then you roll that fixed barbell. To the other hand to grip. It's fun, fun warm up, but uh, take some getting used to. Again, the fixed barbell. You're you're focusing your eyes. See, I'm focusing my eyes in the middle. Okay. You don't look at the fixed barbell. You look in the middle. Okay. You see that? My eyes are looking in the middle, in between both arms, as I shift. And to the side of my eyes, the corners of my eyes, the fixed barbell is rolling side to side. So it's kind of like juggling. Good exercise. Good warm up. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah, inspecting, inspecting things. Thinking, right? So you see my hands going? Okay. It's getting used to <clears throat> shifting. Shifting, shifting, shifting. Okay, shift, shift. So my, my goal is to just keep going, right? So the shift from one end, one hand to the other. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, just thinking. So you see, I just I'm pacing and walking around thinking. Thinking about my next set, visualizing, mental, mentally, thinking. Okay, and then here I go again. Shift. 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 Good. I think that was three. Good. Okay. Lower back raise extension. See, I'm not going all the way down, all the way up. Just do them. Warming up. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now I'm looking side to side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, it doesn't have to be slow. I'm just doing volume, getting the volume in. Is it, am I injuring my lower back? No, I'm strengthening it. Injuring it would be like, I don't know, using a really heavy weight and just going really fast. Uh, what am I going to do here? Oh boy, these people are going to freak out. Or going to be like, what the hell? Ah, uh, there I go. Okay. Upside down ab crunches. Very good. Very challenging. Very fun to do. See, my shirt 
in order for my shirt to stop slipping down, I usually grab it from the back. So I just curl my back, the back of my shirt like this into a ball tight so it doesn't fall down because yeah it will and just go and just crank it crank it all as much as you can i could do double if i want double on hands if i wanted to go all the way up uh but yeah my priority is to keep my shirt from falling down boom and the blood will get to you boom nice dismount <laughs> the blood will get to your head before your abs start burning. That's the challenge of this, this exercise, okay? How do you deal with the blood flowing to the, your head while you're doing, trying to go for as many reps as possible for your abs? So I, I can go up to like 20 until my head's like was throbbing and I'm like, ah, I gotta stop. My legs, do my legs hurt no, doing this exercise? No. Uh, in the beginning, I think so. But over time, yeah, your leg gets stronger and just gets used to that grip that you saw right there. Oh, this guy in the right is going to freak out. Watch. So I'm just doing some flags. And this guy, he's, he's a hater. See? Boom. He freaks out. He thinks that I almost kicked him, but I didn't. It's funny. It's just a hater. Nothing you can do. So, some people, like I said. Okay, just hand balancing there. What's what's your initial, re initial reaction when you see a nice car? Like, say a, a Lamborghini pulls up. What's your first reaction? Is it good? Is it positive or is it negative? Most people, it's negative in North America. In Asia, it's positive. It's, like, it's a sign of success. Right? I worked hard for this car. If you bought it, if you lease it, or you use your daddy's money, then obviously not. But mostly in, in Asia, they see nice cars as, as, as a positive, okay? But in North America, they see it like, oh, you're a drug dealer or who did you cheat to get that car or you're trying to show off right same thing with a beautiful girl what happens when a beautiful girl girl walks in the room what's your first reaction is it positive or is it negative most of the time it's negative to be honest most girls other girls feel threatened so they they don't like seeing a beautiful girl or more beautiful than them some guys they feel inadequate right because they see a beautiful girl and they're just out of her they're out of her league oh there i go again okay i'm just resting my weight on the bar and my shoulders and i'm just going for uh, lower back yeah lower back raises so the opposite so you saw me on the that machine apparatus in the beginning right with my legs locked in now i'm doing the reverse my arms are locked in and i'm lifting my legs up all right. So, yeah. When people see me, or in general, if, if you do calisthenics in a gym, like a public gym, be, you're, be warned. Be warned. Most people will not like it. They, most people will be jealous. Most people will be haters. Some people will be like, oh, wow. Mostly kids are like, oh, wow. But general public will be like, Ugh, why are you showing off? Kind of, I get that kind of look. It's like, why are you showing off, huh? Why are you so arrogant and cocky? It's like, that's my body weight exercise. That's how I keep it fit. So this is how I train. It's different from you maybe, but this is how I stimulate my muscles and my mind. So I'm doing a muscle ups here. But as you can see, I'm doing assisted, right? Because if I swing forward with my legs straight, I'm going to crash right into that, that shelf that's holding those, those balls there. And I don't want that. So I, my instinct is to stick one leg out in front to stop from having it like a break. Like a break of a car. So here I go back to, yeah, lower. So you see that cycle? Circuit training right there. Okay, so go back at it. You come back. You do something else and then you come around and you, you go back to it. 
That's the way I train. So yeah, drive a nice car. If you're a, be if you're a beautiful girl, if you do calisthenics or gymnastics or something like what I do in the gym, most people will hate you. Most people will be jealous of you. Give you dirty looks and stuff. That's the honest truth. Uh, here I'm doing uh, dragon flags. Uh, my dragon flags, I've been working on this for a month. I didn't do dragon flags until recently. And I find them to be a challenging and fun and brutal. It's a really hard ab exercise because you got to hold your whole body out like a plank. It's very tough. You got to tighten everything, your core, your abs, your legs, your arms, everything. I'm just grabbing onto that pole as hard as I can, gripping it as hard as I can, the lower I go, and then flip over. I like using that apparatus there, the platform. Uh, I used to use a bench, but I just don't like the soft cushion of the bench. And this, I have more range of motion, right? I can lower my legs even lower. I can curl them down lower, as you can see. And two things that this exercise is going to help. Oh, there I go, lower back. Two things is going to help. It's going to help with the hollow back for handstand. It's going to also help with the front lever when you do calisthenics, okay? I remember years ago, uh, I saw this guy perform very nice front levers in a, in a park. And I asked him, like, yeah, what exercise do you do? And he says, yeah, do lots of dragon flags. That was his answer, okay? So... You want to know how to do front lever, work on dragon flags. Okay, you can do it like I do. I like this platform. I don't see anybody else doing it, so you can steal this idea from me. Okay, see, I place my back, upper back here. Grab the pole, grab the bar, as you can see, whatever you want. And then raise your body up. And then lift your lower back off the platform. Okay, legs straight. And... Down to a 45 degree or lower angle. Ooh. Ooh. See, I can go, I should go lower. So my goal is to go even lower, like a, like a arc like this. So my goal is to go like this. So top of the dragon flag down to this curled downwards like this. So it looks like a hollow back when you do a hollow back handstand and B-boy. So dragon, my goal is to go from here, top of the dragon flag down to here, the lowest part of the dragon flag, where I'm just just tightening everything, clenching everything, and just do a hollow back. Which, yeah, will take some time, but this is an excellent workout. And right here, I'm grabbing the edge, and I'm working on my lower back, okay? This is good. This is a good exercise for your planches, okay? Okay, a lot of people, they work on their shoulders and their their pseudo planche push ups, but you should also work out your lower back. Like uh, Sci Monster, Sci Monster Strength, he, he has this video where he incorporates his lower back exercise on a plyo box. But I just adapted it to him using that platform. Okay, just hug the, this platform with your arms and just raise your legs up as straight as you can. And this is hell, this is hard hell, exhausting. Um, if you don't like pressing your stomach onto a, this flat steel platform, then you can use a mat on top. Sometimes I put a mat on. Oh, there I go. <laughs> See, this is me being bored. This is why I, I get bored easily in the gym now. So this is why how I stimulate my mind, okay? Just doing some crazy stuff like this. And is it dangerous? You're asking me? No. This is not dangerous because you can control your way down. See, boom, you control your way down. So don't worry. I don't know why, but this kid gave me some dirty looks. I don't know, I don't know why. I'm just doing cable crunches. But the guy on to the left, I don't know, he's staring at me or something. I don't know why. So this is me doing forever crunches. I don't count. Sets or reps when I do crunches. I just keep going. 
hundreds, hundreds. Muhammad Ali once said, you know, I don't count un until it, I feel it. Right. When it comes to reps. But me, I don't count in general. I just go into prayer mode. My, my, my mentality when I'm in the gym is like when I go to church or when I go to a temple. I pray, I meditate, I'm in the zone. I'm in a zen-like state. And this is why you should train alone. You can't feel this state when you're having a conversation with your workout buddy. That workout buddy is distracting you. Can you go to, can you go to church with your friend and not be tempted not to yak with them sit while they're sitting beside you? No, you got to pray by your side. It's, you're having a, a conversation between you and your body. This is me praying with my body. So you go to church and you have a connection with God. You go to a temple, you have a connection with Buddha. When I go to gym, I have a connection with my body. I'm having a conversation with my body. I'm saying, I'm asking my body, how far can you go today? Like, you didn't get enough sleep. You're aching here. You got an injury here. You're stressed out. You, you, you got cramps. You, you didn't eat the right foods today. Maybe you just, yeah, you're not feeling 100% today. There's always something up. Always something up. Okay. You don't drive per, you don't drive perfectly every day, do you? You don't have like a textbook driving performance every day. No, you have off days, you have bad days. And this is me going, going, going. Okay. So this is why I don't, I think this kid was giving me dirty looks. He was just sitting there playing with his phone, staring at me while I'm just going, going hard. He doesn't like that. See, that's another thing. If you outperform other people, they will get jealous of you, okay? If they are small-minded. It's just a fact. People get jealous. The hammer, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. You hear that a lot. If you stick out wherever you go, wherever you are, in a workplace, in a gym, I don't know, wherever, there will be people jealous of you, insecure. They want they don't want anyone to be better than them kind of attitude, which sucks. I mean, can't help it. I mean, I deal with it all the time. Uh, this gym is fine, though, compared to other gyms I've been to. I've got real passive aggressive haters, but that's a fact. You will get haters, whether you like it or not, when you stand out, when you outperform, when, you, when you're just better than most people. And you know what? I help everyone. I try to help everyone. And some people, you know, everyone like every workout, someone interrupts and asking me questions. Basically, can you help me for free? Kind of attitude. Help me do hands and help me do help me do muscle abdominals. My mind is like, yeah, pay me. But this is why I'm making these videos so I can tell you what goes through my mind, what I deal with when I train on a daily basis. All right. So leave people alone is what I'm saying in the gym or provide value first before just taking. Okay. People just take, 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 take like begging. Can you spare change? You got any sets? Can you show me how to do muscle up? Can you teach me muscle up for free? No, provide value first. Okay. You have no idea. I don't know why, but like, Someone asked me how to do a handstand. I show them. They do one attempt and they quit and they don't do it ever again. I get that a lot. You know, I want to help someone who's doing the work, you know? So if I see someone like trying handstands every day, trying their best, I'll help that person if they come up to me and ask for my help. Most of the time when I see someone doing, trying to attempt what I do, they don't ask for my help, which is fine. But if they do, if they ever come up to me and ask, hey, can you show me how you're doing this instead? I, I will help them because their, their actions speak louder. Your actions have to speak for you, not your words. Actions. So I don't know how many minutes have passed, but you can see I'm just going and going and going. I'm thinking, like, oh, I grabbed that. I was like, oh, what is this? Hmm, it's heavy. 
It's made out of metal. I don't know what that is. A collar or something. Put onto a barbell. Uh -huh. Added weight. There I go. Give, put that pin down even lower. Strenuous. Farm work. This is farmer strength. This is old man strength. Keep going. This, it's that well. It looks like a well. Digging for oil. Pulling for oil. Just keep going. Don't stop, baby. Keep going side to side. See my, I'm shifting my weight because it's really heavy now. All right, so I shift my head so I can pull it down lower. Just crunch it, baby. Crunch it. Hundreds. I do hundreds of this. You see? It's, it's pretty straightforward. Up and down compared to like going upside down, hanging from a bar. Crunches, right? Those are have their limitations. But this, you can keep going, as you can see. And again, I just keep pushing. I'm having a conversation with my body. Like, can you do another one? Yes, I can. Let's do it. And I go for it. Boom. Boom. Pull. Pull. Bow. Pray. Meditate. Boom. Boom. Pain. Pain. I, I think I remember. Uh, the reason I take my pockets out of my pants is because when I go into a handstand, sometimes I don't like them jumbled up in my pants. These pants are a little bit too tight. are getting too tight for me now, actually. So, so again. Again. So... You're asking probably, why are you training so hard, Justin? I mean, like, are you competing or something? Like, some people have asked me, are you competing for something? Like, it's like this invisible hand is guiding me, like pushing me. I don't know how to, else to explain it. It's just, I want to be better. I want to go further. That's how I explain it. I, I just want to go further. Be the best in the world. Like everyone knows I'm the hardest working guy in the gym. No one can contest that. Everyone knows. I want that. Hardest working man in the room. You got to lead by example. Think about your work setting. Who's the hardest working man or, or woman in your workplace? Or in your school, or on your team, like whatever sports you play, who's the hardest working person? Again, it's like an invisible hand that guides them, just guiding me. Go further. If I don't push myself, I just I don't feel fulfillment. I don't feel it. I love this machine, by the way. This is new for me. It's like a twisting. You can see it's like a twisting motion. I love it. Torque. Torque, torque, torque. Good for throwing punches, throwing kicks, boxing, Muay Thai, MMA, kickboxing. You know what I'm talking about. You need that torque. Twist. Good for your abs. Great, 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 great machine. I love it. See, that's the thing I, I love about Planet Fitness. You get time and space. And they're... Equipment is provided by Life Fitness. Now, if you go to any commercial gym, 99% chance that their equipment is supplied by Life Fitness. I don't know, here in Canada, at least. Every commercial gym I've stepped foot in, I see Life Fitness printed on the machines. So, you get, I don't know, commercial gym, community center gym, private gym it's made by the same company so take advantage of it life fitness is a good brand when it comes to workout machines like this i love it you just twist 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 you feel it oh man twist and just keep going i love it the only two things I don't like about uh, Planet Fitness. 
One is that there's no artificial turf, so there's no really good place to stretch or to pull a sled or do athletic functional exercises, right? Uh, that's one thing. I, I like you. I like going onto artificial turf and stretching, doing body weight exercises and uh, like pulling sleds and all that good stuff. Plyo box and all that. Jumping on the plyo box. There's no plyo box here, but yeah. Incline leg, mach leg press, boom. Start with the calves, warming up the calves. I'm not going heavy. Just getting used to this machine. This is new for me, this machine at this new gym. Getting used to it, getting used to the feeling. Every, every new gym you step foot in and every new machine you attempt, just you get a feel for it, feel for it. It has its own idiosyncrasies. Maybe it's shifty on one side. Maybe it creaks. Maybe it's it's got its own personality. Is what I'm saying. So you just get used to it. Become familiar with that machine. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm not going crazy heavy. And when it comes to gymnastics or calisthenics, they tell you that the heavier your legs are, or the the heavier your lower body is, the harder it is for you to perform body weight exercises like handstands or planches the front levers okay it's just physics right it's just the heavier load you have to deal with but uh for me i train legs anywhere so who cares but i don't want my legs to be gigantic huge because i want them to be fast and swing them fast and kicking and muay thai and teeping or flipping you name it. So I train my legs. Do I want them toned? Yes. Do I want them bigger? Mm, just a little bit, but I don't want them huge. That's what I'm saying. Good for, I want them stronger for running, jumping, and all that jazz. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, two things I don't like about Planet Fitness. So yeah, the artif there's no artificial turf or space for you to stretch or move around. Pull a sled. The second thing is, uh, what was the second thing? I forgot. I can't remember off the top of my head. It'll come to me. Two thirds of Planet Fitness is occupied by cardio machines, which is fine. I like the cardio machines, but most people flock to the non-cardio areas. So the weight machine, weight, the weights, the free weights, the machines, everything else. So you see like two thirds of a space is being unoccupied in my planet fitness, which is fine because there's all these empty lanes that you can make use of. This is these long, stretchy, empty lanes. For you to do sprints, jumps, hops, skips, lunges, ooh, hip ab adductors, adductors. Adduct is to close, abduct is to stretch away, pull away. Abduct, abduct the child. Child was abducted, taken from here, taken away, right? So abduct is like this, abduct. Adduct is to bring in. Adduct, addition, right? I don't know why guys don't do this exercise. This is this is good for kicking. This is good for Muay Thai. It's good for soccer. You have to kick a ball. You have to kick a heavy bag. You have to kick a your opponent. You gotta do an air flare and for b boying. Flares, gymnastics. It's the same adductor. <laughs> I just realized. I was like, eh, go back to the other one. The the girl over there was using the abductor, the one that goes this way. That's fine. See, just adapt. So, do you see what I'm doing here? You can see as right there as an example. I don't bother anybody. Like I leave people alone in every gym I step foot in. Beginner, advanced, I don't care. I just leave them be. It's just like a crowded cafeteria. Everyone's eating their meal. Do you walk up to people while they're eating and say, hey, how many more bites you got left? I want to sit down and take your table and seat. Move. 
That's what you're communicating. Are you gonna when you enter a crowded cafe and people are sitting down drinking their coffee, do you walk up to people and say, Hey, how many more sips you, sips you got left? Uh, I'm waiting for you to get up and go so I can sit down and drink my coffee and occupy occupy that seat. No, that girl right there, as you can see in the footage, she was using the abductor machine. And I just let her be. She can she saw me and she's like, oh she, this guy wants to use my machine, but I didn't bother her. I just let her be. I just wait. I adapt. If on that day I don't get to use the abductor machine, then I don't. You get to use it. That's fine for me. A lot of people have this mentality like I have a squat day, I have a pull day, I have a push day, I have a chest day, I have a back day, I have a shoulder day. They have to do these specific exercises or specific machines. I have to use a squat rack. Some the community center gym I went to, I could never get access to the leg extension. Okay, there I go. I'm working on one arm handstands, by the way. Okay, just working on it again. I had all these injuries, so many injuries, and just getting it back again. Go back to that grind, one arm handstand grind. Okay. Fingers. They tell you to do five finger, four finger, three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. But all you need is like two fingers. The regular handstand and two fingers. Just get used to doing a push up with one hand like this and the other hand like this. Fingers. So fingered push ups on one hand. And then you just get into a handstand eventually like this. See, this, this hand is doing, using fingers, and this hand is using flat. So this is how I enter my one-arm handstand. I enter it like this, and then I gradually lift up, and then I have two fingers. Two fingers is where you lose your, start losing balance. Okay, one finger, you're, you're in off axis, and then no fingers, one-arm handstand itself. Just, good luck. Good luck. Respect if you can do one arm handstand. It's so challenging. So challenging. 360 degrees of just frustration. Your body moves everywhere. It's, like, it's hard to control. Think of it like a, a tree with three branches. It's like you got to balance it. A really, really skinny tree held up by one branch, and then there's three branches in the air. That's how it feels like. Okay, see? Two branches are in the air. One branch is trying to lift off. And that skinny branch in the middle is holding it all together. It's just so hard. Hella hard. You got to dr drill the exercises. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, so the, yeah. If you can't get access to a squat rack and it's leg day for you, try to improvise. Adapt. Get some heavy dumbbells and do some dumbbell squats. Or... Get a fixed barbell, or if there's an extra barbell lying around, just grab that barbell, load it up, and try to lift it off the ground and on top of your back and do a squat, weighted squat. Improvise, adapt. So that's the end of my workout, part two. Part two of two. And uh, yeah, taking off the shirt. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Just drying off my shirt, actually. See, I'm not... I don't really care about posing. I I already look good. I, I don't really care about posing, as you can see. It's like, look at that. Look at those abs. Looks good. Anyways, that's my commentary for today. That's the end of the video. I hope, thanks for watching. Any questions, leave them down below. Bye.